Hey guys, so in this video I am going to be painting, uh, painting, <laughs> and we are going to be using the Bria Reese heavy body acrylic paints. So I just have this small sample set and they were at Walmart and I know I've seen Bria Reese uh, other things at Walmart and I've really liked them and I noticed that Michaels actually is starting to get Bria Reese things in. When I was down in Calgary I saw that Bria Reese uh, has alcohol inks which I'm going to be doing a review video on. I haven't even tried them at all. Um, but actually, when I do that video, which won't be, um, I'm not sure when that's going to be, but I will put the link there. If you don't see the link coming up right now, it's because I haven't filmed the video yet. So if you want to see the review for Bria Reese alcohol inks, uh, check up in that little, click the little eye thing there. But today we are going to do these heavy body acrylics. So I'm going to use brushes, but also a few, uh, painting knives, and I'm going to be doing it on this, uh, wood canvas. These are a pastel color set so they can be, they'll be really cool to use in um, for some colors but I might need to add some darker colors in here because I don't want it all to be very very light. Uh, I'm gonna need a little bit of contrast in there so I might have to add something in there. We'll see. Uh, this one here does not have the black lid because I opened these to see if this was like what if it was a pastel ultramarine if it was typical ultramarine and it is a pastel one uh, but as soon as I opened the lid it fell on my floor and I have not been able to find it and like this was a couple days ago and I still haven't seen it and I looked for it right away like I knew when it fell and I started looking for it and couldn't find it so yeah so annoying anyways so if you want to see how I do this DIY palette, especially uh, which is especially helpful for uh, using painting knives, then you can check out the link there. I filmed this actually while I was doing that, so definitely check that link out, along with some pouring medium. I have some iridescent medium, which might be kind of fun to use, and I have some modeling paste for some texture. Uh, this is Liquitex brand, and this is Curry's uh, brand from Canada. And this is a really good gesso. I actually really love this gesso. Um, I find that it's very similar to the Liquitex Professional uh, gesso. So Liquitex has their Basics gesso, which is great. And then their Professional gesso. Let me see if I can find it here for you. Um, this is really good for mixed media for if you are wanting to work a lot on top of your gesso. Um, this works just a little bit better than, um, sorry, this is the clear gesso and this is the regular white gesso. It works a little bit better than the basics gesso, but the basics gesso is totally fine. If that's what you have, just go with that and that's not gonna be a problem at all, whatever. So I am going to, oh, get all that dried stuff up there. I'm just gonna put this right in the middle I'm going to need a lot of white for paint and I'm going to need way more than that for gesso and actually I might just do the gesso right now on the canvas so this can be brushed on or it can be uh, let me just zoom out here a little bit and because I want some texture in this, I am not looking for a totally smooth surface. This is going to be pretty smooth anyways, but I want these painting knife marks in here. So I'm just, I'm not worried about a brush. I think I'm just going to keep using this. And actually, let's just add some of this in here, some modeling paste. I probably have some that's already open, but so I'm just going to clean this off and get this out of here. So this is from, uh, you can get lighter modeling paste. Um, let me see if I can find mine here. And so this is my golden. So you can see that it's a lot more, like this is gonna be a lot um, thicker. So I am going to time-lapse the rest of this video and all I'm doing is um, just trying to get myself um, loosened up. There's kind of 
a couple purposes to preparing the any surface this way. This is a wood canvas surface, not canvas. I keep calling it canvas, but it's just a wood surface. And it helps to loosen up and just um, get me kind of used to the idea that I'm just doing a loose uh, painting and a little bit more free and whimsical and not not super detailed. And also it puts some texture on the canvas. So I do really like preparing a ca uh, canvas this way. And now I am just adding some just some pastel colors in the background. I just want just a few colors in there, just some subtle ones. And uh, I'm thinking that I'm gonna do like turquoise and greens, blues in the background. And then I will do the complementary colors for the flowers. So oranges, pinks, yellows. And I am just using a, I think it's a number 12, straight brush. And you just want to use um, a soft to medium type brush when you, when you want to put colors in this way in the background. And because you just want them to blend and just kind of be part of the background. You don't want them to stick out in any detail. Not yet, anyways. And then I'm going in with my painting knife because that can also add some interesting textures and lines with the paint in there and then it helps with the molding paste as well you can still kind of work with that so it's drying but as it dries it can still be built up and it can be maneuvered a little bit and so you can see me here, I'm just playing around with some different textures I could do. And I just want to kind of frame the piece a little bit with texture rather than color. And so in the top left corner, you saw me adding some more textures that would stand out. And so I just go over with my painting knife just really lightly on textures that are already there and that helps to build up the texture. And then on the bottom right, I add a texture. And now I am going in with a more bristle brush, so a, a rougher, drier brush. And so I like to keep um, some brushes that I just don't have any problem kind of beating up on the canvas or the wood or whatever surface I'm using. And so that's that first layer there of different colors was just with a rough brush and I just wanted to put in some foliage. I'm still not sure at this point what I'm doing in the background. I know I want to have some flowers in there but I figure it can't hurt to add in a little bit of foliage yet. So even though I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with the foliage. The great thing with acrylic is that you can always paint over it, lighten it, darken it. I mean it's always easier to darken than lighten but and I the way I paint with acrylic is I just keep going back and forth till I find something I like and then that way I, I also build up lots of layers which I really like to do and so I'm using a softer brush for these flowers here and so first I just went in and just kind of got the composition there and just kind of figured out where I wanted them and which colors I wanted to add which colors of flowers I wanted just kind of figuring that out and now that I've kind of got it figured out for the main part, uh, for the most part, I am just adding a little bit of shading and coloring and just doing a little bit more rather than just one flat color, one flat circle for those flowers. And I do add in a couple of flowers here uh, just because I don't want there to be lots of foliage. I want the flowers to be the focus and I didn't want like a big open spot there of foliage so I added in another flower there and then I decided to do some dripping because 
I don't know. I always like that look, dripping flowers. And you've seen that. You've seen me do that in watercolors lots, especially. And uh, it's quite easy to do in acrylic. So what you do is you put down whatever color you want, you know, and and do do more than one color. And then you just get some water on your brush till it uh, dro starts dropping down. You could also use a little mister bottle. That will help. Um, with heavier paints, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on here, but the heavier paints uh, don't run as easy because they, you know, they have a higher viscosity. Um, so more fluid paints work a little bit better with this, but you can still get it to work with the heavier paints if you need to. And now I am figuring out the angle that we are looking at all of these flowers and I'm just going to call them roses. I'm not sure if they're really roses. They're, um, they can kind of be roses, but you know, we'll just call them roses. They're whimsical style. This isn't a super accurate detailed style, but what I am trying to do here is get the center figured out. So they're not all facing the same way. You definitely don't want to do a group of flowers and they're all facing the same way unless that's actually you know part of your whole purpose and composition in in a painting but if you just want to do like a nice grouping of flowers you want them facing different angles some going up some going down and so that's what I'm just trying to figure out here and I am using, for the most part, I'm using the Bria Reese colors. I did have to go in with some burnt umber and burnt sienna to do the centers. I just did not have a dark enough uh, color with the Bria Reese. But I do really like the pinks and the coral and yellow in here. Um, the, they're such nice colors, actually. And... I am actually going to do a second part to this video where I just show you the paints themselves, um, not in a painting, and just paint with the colors. I just kind of, in my art journal, I'm just going to be showing you the colors themselves because I don't use all the colors in this painting. And I'm going to be comparing them to uh, Liquitex and some other brands. And so... I included that in the second part because this pa this video is just going to be too long. So right now it's at half an hour, and if I wouldn't have time lapsed it, this would have been over two hours. <laughs> so um, I thought I would time lapse this and just narrate it again. And so the other part to this will be a smaller. It's like. I don't even know if it's 10 minutes. And then I'm just kind of working on the colors a little bit more. I do want to have some different shades. They're all yellows, oranges, pinks. That's basically what I'm sticking with here. And then I didn't want to have just like one section up in the corner there. I wanted to kind of guide the eye around the painting. And so I have some other flowers coming in down here and just a little group of flowers. And with the painting knife, honestly, the best way to do it is to just start working with it. And if you are able to approach it with the feeling of, with the mindset that you're not going to get um, realistic flowers at first definitely not at first um, then then you'll you'll enjoy it a lot more and so you're just trying to build up texture and just little shapes um, textured shapes that could possibly be maybe abstract type petals and and whatnot so that's that's the best way to approach it if you're if you're teaching yourself to to use the painting knife 
And there are definitely ways to get um, more realistic with painting knife, of course. And I, I like using a painting knife this way because I find that, I don't know, I'm just more successful with it if I approach it this way. And then I use the brush for more realistic type things. More realistic type look. And uh, I actually really like the flowers that I don't think about too much. And this is a common thing with me in any kind of painting that you see me do. Um, when I'm just kind of doing, just like putting very intentional kind of strokes on there and not really thinking about a flower shape, but just putting small strokes. Uh, I actually like how that turns out. So I like the flowers that I did um, in the sections by themselves, those two kind of towards the bottom, those two sections. I mean, I like the ones up in the top right as well, but um, I just I just like being a little bit more casual with, with the painting knife. And sometimes in that top right corner, I get a little bit too, uh, try to get a little bit too detailed with it. But as you can see, I did most of this painting with a painting knife. I wasn't really planning on that. I was thinking I was going to be using the brush for the most part. Um, but then I just found that I really liked how I felt using the painting knife. I just, I felt a lot more relaxed using the painting knife. And that's just, I mean, another time I might feel more relaxed doing the brush for whatever reason, that's just how I felt at this time. And I'm kind of struggling a little bit uh, throughout this painting because I am going back and forth in my head over wanting details on this painting and then wanting a very super soft, almost out of focus look on the painting. And so you can kind of tell that I'm going back and forth. Like I add in, especially with the greener, the green and the foliage, like I kind of, you know, add in some more colors and details and then I kind of try to blur them out and soften them a little bit. And then I go back in and, and I'm just going back and forth throughout the whole thing. And I think I would prefer a softer look to this painting. Um, the flowers are pretty soft. It's just the greenery. I'm not totally happy with the outcome. I, f I feel like it's a little bit too, um, I don't mind the, the values of the greenery. So I don't feel like it's too dark or too light, but I just feel like it's too, um, maybe, I don't know if messy is the right word or erratic. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it looks fine, but I think for what I wanted, for what I want for this painting, I just wanted a little bit softer, out of focus, greenery look, if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't make any sense, but, um, yeah, I mean, you do have to add some of these darker values in there, which I'm doing right now, because it really helps to bring those flowers forward. And so you do need to do that. I, well, I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to have some depth to your painting and make it look like you've got this cluster of flowers, um, you do want to put in some of that. And now I'm softening some of this greenery because it's just a little bit dark and I'm not sure if I want to go that dark. So I kind of soften it out and then I add some more dark and I'm just going back and forth. And honestly, that's kind of how I approach most of my painting, at least for acrylic. Um, watercolor, you, it's hard to, to approach it that way because you can only do so much with watercolor and only you can't really layer colors over colors and values over values. You have to have that figured out all right away. And with acrylic, you can kind of play with the values a little bit um, to a point. And yeah, so you can see I'm covering that back up with some white and just blending it in there. Um, and so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to do like 
I kind of want to do a whole series in this kind of style and just do clusters of flowers like this and then do different colors like this is a really pastel look and and I kind of want to do ones that are you know maybe all kind of purplish pink or blues or so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a series of paintings they won't all be YouTube videos I'll just do a couple YouTube videos and maybe I should do a live one if I ever get brave enough to do live videos but um, let me know actually in the comments if you would like to see a live video like this sometime because that would be you know a couple of hours or so well not really it would be an hour for sure but it would be available to watch after as well um, so now I am adding some more drips and I do need to put some dimension in those other flowers because I don't want them to just be flat on the canvas and so I'm doing some more drippy. So the gray uh, is Bria Reese and it is quite um, thick. So it's a little bit, it's not dripping as much as I would like, <laughs> which is okay. And I actually use my brush to kind of just put some color in there. And I really like the, um, the look it gives when I put some of the green or the, sorry, the pink and the blue with that gray. And I actually really, really like the gray. Um, you know, you don't really think of grays necessarily when you're thinking of florals, because gray is just so colorless, but um, I kind of look like the look it's giving me. And then I want to add a little bit of turquoise, just bring some of that out. And because I, I just really like the contrast that it gives me with the color of the flowers. The turquoise is such a good, compliment to it and um, so I'm just getting some more of those drips and and while I'm at it adding some more values in there because you do need some contrasting values some light and dark and then I'm going back into the flowers again and adding some just kind of working with the colors and making sure that they are the colors I want in there and that they have some variation in the flowers and there's some highlights and shading so I'm just going back in and often with my paintings you've if you've watched me paint you know that I go back and forth so like I'll be working on a flower and I'm just kind of like I don't know what's happening with this flower it doesn't look good it doesn't look like what I want it to look like so I'll just move on to another flower and then I kind of forget that I'm frustrated with that flower and then I find myself going back and I'm not even thinking about it and I just know what I want to do with it and I don't even remember necessarily that I was frustrated with it because I got focused on something else and then just kind of reflex I just go to you know other flowers and I end up oh I'm back at this flower that I'm was frustrated with and I'm working on it and I know exactly what I want to do with it so that's that's kind of, um, you know, like just getting your eyes off of that one area that's causing you some frustration or whatever and moving to another part of the painting can be similar to leaving the whole painting and coming back the next day and looking at it, which I do often. And actually, you will see at the end of this painting, um, once I'm done this video, and then I started taking some photographs of it, just um, not my actual photographs that I would make for a print, um, but just maybe for the thumbnail or whatever, I always just take some photos with my phone. And I noticed that I really needed to change those two flowers right in the middle of that because they're the same color. And so you'll see the end, the one I changed after I was done filming this video, I changed it to yellow, like completely yellow. I think it started out being yellow actually, and then somehow it went different. Okay, so now I am wanting to make these flowers kind of have a little bit of a shadow behind them because, you know, if you think about flowers, like they get darker towards when they go in towards the greenery, right? So I'm just trying to get that in there a little bit. 
and it also helps to give them like a round um, make them look round rather than just flat circles because really you can see the way I'm painting these flowers all I'm doing is just doing circular motions that's literally all I'm doing you've seen me paint some other flowers like especially in watercolor and stuff and I do different different shapes and stuff but with these ones really it's just circular motions with my brush so in order to avoid having just a bunch of circles flat on the canvas I need to give it some kind of dimension and make it look like these flowers are rounded and so when you put the shadows in the back like I'm doing um, then that can really help and so what I do is I put the color down and it's usually um, burnt sienna burnt umber mixed with maybe some orange for one of the flowers red with one of the flowers or like a bright pink um, just depending on what the shade is of the flower that I'm working on at the moment and uh, then I use the acrylic retarder that I have and you could use pouring medium would work um, glazing medium I think would work any kind of medium that extends the working time of your acrylic paints so anything that says you know it, it also extends working time anything that says something like that will work and then I kind of just use a flat brush and and use it kind of in an airbrush way and I just you can see right there I'm just softening it out and so all I've done is dip my brush to a tiny little bit of that medium and I just soften the shadow out so that it's not like a hard line and that takes practice but um, it does really help to put some depth between the flowers themselves and then also you can just put like a tiny little bit of like the darkest dark that you have um, just like tiny little lines of it and that can really help to make it kind of pop out so I'm using a straight brush to right there to kind of bring out that to blend that out um, I also use a little bit of that smaller round brush and most of the brushes I'm using on here are like a softer type brush um, I don't think since I did that first little layer of greenery I, I haven't used any bristle brushes or harder harder brushes they've all been uh, pretty soft so I don't use any um, of the same brushes for watercolor that I do for acrylics but I do use watercolor brushes sometimes on my acrylic paintings just not the same ones that I would also paint with watercolor I like to keep my watercolor and acrylic brushes separate um, maybe when I'm working my art journal I don't really worry about that too much but I have some expensive um, higher quality water brushes that I definitely would not ever use with acrylic paint and um, yeah so the rest of this is just kind of fiddling around working on adding some more depth adding some highlights just working on the flowers and um, I don't think I have too much more to add although I am really liking the very left of that top like the main cluster of flowers I really like the top left that yellow that's just sticking out under that greenery and then the pink above it that just looks awesome um, and then I realized another thing that I realized after I was filming this was that this is really starting to look like a triangle at the top like just a like a straight triangle at the bottom there so I had to that was another thing I had to do after I finished filming was I had to add some greenery coming I had to just alter that shape a little bit so it didn't look so straight across like such a triangle and just had some little bits coming out so that it broke it up a little bit but I um I'm really happy with the two little clusters of flower there's only you know just those two flowers there but um, I really like how those turned out and then I also go in and I must have hit the, 
the camera there, the stand. And I also go in with some just little bits of just random brush strokes of different colors. And so you can see here, I've really changed that one flower in the middle there at the left there into a bright yellow flower. So I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely go watch part two to find out how, um, to find out more about the Briarese paints.